But we are gonna we are gonna get right into. It. We have a testimony, a great testimony from Kim today. Um, so Kim um, is from Nietzsche, right, in the U.S. And so she came here into Octona, a far, long, long drive, the whole 10 minutes or so. Exactly. And um, came in to share with us what God is doing through all this that we've been doing. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to get started. And so um, I'm going to get these people to watch the comments for me because I'm going to be maybe facing this way half the time. Um, but no, let's talk about this because um, doing what we do for so many years, it's, there's a lot of effort in it and it's good to see results. I think that's with everything. And so, Kim, when did we first meet? Um, would have been 10 some years ago. Yeah. To begin with, yeah. 10 years ago. And when did you come back? Um, when did I come back? Just when, now? Yeah. It would have been a year ago. A year ago. Yep. And so she waited a whole 10 years, <laughs> by the way. But, you didn't make a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh, yeah. No, um, we're going to have a lot of fun today, by the way. This, we, we've been trying for almost a whole year to keep her under wraps, but it's almost impossible. Yes, it's not the truth. <laughs> so, so, but we're going to do, we're going to go for this because it's, because I feel that God is doing something in, in DLC through you and, and through the people around us and so forth. So, um, and when you came back about a year ago, and I remember that day, uh, I think Colleen kind of dragged you there <laughs> or invited you. And okay, but, we both dragged each other. I think we were both so ready. There you go. Yeah. So what was the purpose of you coming? Was it was the purpose of you coming to DLC because you wanted to have a full-time church? My purpose was to get ministry. Yeah. That was my most important purpose, yes. So was I it, was not actually interested in church at the time. No? No. no. My goodness. Mm -mm. Okay. Because I was... I had been hurt so many times from churches and mm -hmm. I just didn't want to get involved and I had a lot of stuff to deal with before yeah. I got to that point, so... So you came, so tell me a little bit about your experience of entering into the church and just the experience of the process of what we went through. Well, when we first got there, it was just our, basically my main focus was for the ministry and I had already known Kelly be beforehand anyway. So You're talking about Kelly, Kelly Friesen. Friesen. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So um, going in with ministry with her was, you know, not a big deal because I'd already kind of known her and what she was like, so that was easy, but... Um, I just find it funny because when we first, Colleen and I both went the first time, we we basically thought, well, we're going to go there for a couple of months. We're going to get all healed up and we're going to be good to go. And a year later, we're still dealing with crap and <laughs> still get healed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's just a, it's, it's kind of neat how God, um, he just takes little by little for us to deal with. I mean, I think if we had everything at, brought out at one time, we would be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things we probably don't even really realize we do have to deal with. And so God just kind of gradually peels apart or peels away those mm -hmm. layers. And before you know it, we're getting to the point of being healed and yeah, hopefully to the point of being ready to roll. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Helena from Morris. Awesome. Glad you could join us. Tell Jacob to say something. I told him <laughs> to before, remember? But anyway... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so this is um so you came for healing uh, and we don't need to get into the healing but what kind of results were you feeling in the beginning like what what kind of experiences was there for you like what made you stay around like just for continued healing yeah and then it was nice the worship i mean instantly when we're, the worship started i mean i was drawn into that i'm always drawn into music so so let's talk about that a little bit let's talk about the worship a little bit what what brought what do you think worship did for you? Like giving, having the opportunity. How, how long was it before you guys started worship? And when, how long did you guys come there? It was six months. Six months? Mm -hmm. And that was what? In March. When we started. Wasn't, was it in March, yeah. right? March of this year you started. I think so. And so you basically took over very quickly because just because of the circumstances. But when you, when you were invited into that, like what, did, what does worship do for you? To me, it, it's like a, uh, an avenue where I can have freedom. Like I, I, when I worship to me, it's just me and God. I have a, sometimes I have a hard time even looking at the people because I'm just so involved with how it works with this connection. So, mm -hmm. um, to me, it's just a, a one-on-one -on -one. and I, when I can see the people and, the, and see what they experience, it always, of course, you know, keeps you going, but it's still all about God. Mm -hmm. It's still just, it's such an open door, I guess. So, so tell me, uh, like... I think the biggest I want to like what's 
like your journey through this place, like what what is DLC to you? Like we're talking about the whole idea of this testimony, not just the whole idea, it's about God, but just the idea of how God used this place. So for other people watching and wondering how God could use this place for them. What 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 has God done for you? Um, and how has he helped you through this all? Well, as a continuing a continuing of the, the healing that has taken place in the ministry, it's to the point where when you walk in a church and somebody cares about you, all of a sudden it's just like a family that, I mean, right now it's, it's such an amazing family. I can't even, it's, I don't know if I've ever experienced a family where you can just come together and everyone just loves on each other so easily and not just, and not just um, saying, hi, how are you? It's literally wanting to know, how are you? Mm -hmm. Like you'd really want to sit down with that person and actually discuss and, and then pray. I mean, it's just a. Uh, so for me, that has been very healing because, like I said, I've been hurt by many churches. So to come into this situation and be part of a family that actually cares and loves, it's overwhelming. Like it's, And it, it also opens me up to know I will do anything for my family. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you would at home, you will do anything for your church family. Mm -hmm. Just to make them succeed and make make it um, spread, you know, make God spread throughout, throughout you know, wherever mm -hmm. you're at. So... So uh, personally, like personally, what 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 have you drawn over the year? What what has besides family for yourself in your process of healing? Um, what have what kind of results have you seen in your life? In my life, yeah, I've become um, way less critical. Um, I I feel I become a lot more soft, um, uh, not as a hard heart, um, and I don't know, just more open. I don't know, it's just. Do you feel that, uh, like, when, when when we go through the healing process, and when we've been working with any, like we do with everybody, but mm -hmm. anybody goes through a healing process, do you feel that um, that every moment is a new step for you? Oh yeah. It's, it's oh all, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you have to do the steps twice because you don't <laughs> learn. But <laughs> so you're actually saying that we make mistakes sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, we as humans do <laughs> definitely make mistakes, but it's well worth it. I mean, in the end, it's well worth it. Yeah. Because as you as you learn as you go through those steps you're growing and you're stretching and you're uh trusting and having more faith and that's what that's the goal i mean is to rely on god more and that's the idea of it mm -hmm. i've grown a lot i think within this last year i think it's been pretty amazing actually to watch from where i came from a year ago mm -hmm. so it's pretty exciting uh, and so you would say that through this church um the process that you need is happening oh for sure okay yeah and so and it's hard to not to go deeper with that, but I, I feel like, is there a nugget that you can give us that you've, can you give us a, an example of, of the time you started to know an example of a big change in your life? Um, the big change in my life has been the healing through worship. Okay. Um, I have had more freedom in worship now than I ever have, and I've never experienced that before. And just being part of a, a worship where the freedom of the spirit is being able to be used, um, mm -hmm. that has actually opened me up a lot more as far as my heart. Mm -hmm. So um, there's been so much changes in there that, yeah, yeah it's for sure. Been, it's been an amazing year. Yeah. A hard year, <laughs> but an amazing year. <laughs> yeah. And so, do you, in, in this concept, what would you tell somebody out there? Um, because there are people out there that, that went through what you did before you came here mm -hmm. and um, that you found a family. What would you say to somebody that's without a church? What, what do you find the importance of what you're going through that they need to hear? Well, first of all, you can't scratch church just from experiences. You know, you can't just say all mm -hmm. churches are the same because they're not. And secondly, you just have to actually allow yourself to open up. I mean, you, you can walk into a church any place and you can be closed up. But if you actually walk into a church and allow yourself to be somewhat open, then you'll find that there's a difference. So, I yeah. mean, you just, you just get a try. I mean, you can't give up. No. I guess is basically, you just cannot give up. No. So, in that sense, you would encourage people to come to a church. Oh, for sure. Especially ours, right? Exactly. <laughs> there's so Plugging many in. Yeah. Hi, Jacob. <laughs> I'm glad that we are amazing people. And hi, Dennis and group. Good to see you guys online. Um... So when we go into this healing part of everything, but beyond that, how, how's it with, like, tell me a little bit about how you feel with the uh, communication with, let's say, pastor, family, um, all those kind of things. Like, like that, that was sometimes not always, a, that was not always a good thing for you, was it? 
having a communication with the pastor or you know authority or whatever you want to call it or like where, where was the where was the issue of that of, of having past perks yeah uh, we'll, we'll, authority yeah that's what yeah. i'm trying to get to it's, not necessarily that i was against authority no, no. it's just things that have come up from authority yeah so you were hurt by authority yes okay yes and so i think that when i'm when i when i'm when i'm as a pastor i make mistakes and you say, yeah, of course you do. And you probably point them out and you probably drive home and talk about them. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Clean and I like our drive home. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think makes the difference of what we have? I think it's because you're so real. Okay. You're, uh, you're, just, you're just like a brother. I mean, you're not like, it's not that we don't look up to you and know that you're the pastor and you're that, the authority. But it, you have a um, such a realness to you that you you're so open to saying you're you sin you've fallen into traps and I think that's what people connect to is because otherwise if you look at a pastor and they're kind of high up on this pedestal you can't relate to that mm-hmm. so how do you relate to somebody that feels that they're higher than you mm-hmm. so you have a way of making us feel that we are one with you okay. and I think that's a huge thing. Yeah, I think that's one thing to learn because I think that um, for myself, I have to learn that. I think we all have to learn that. And that's part of uh, part of this whole new year, learning whole new things. But um, to actually create a family, but to it's at the same time, just so you all watch out there, um, doing family is dangerous. Like, <laughs> you're going to get trouble. <laughs> you're going to get mad at each other. Yeah. You're going to pick on each other. You're going to feel awkward around each other. Um, all these things will happen, you know, and... I think the biggest thing is um, transparency. First of all, I think the biggest thing is just to be honest with each other right. in that sense of it. Um, and you're usually pretty honest because uh, <laughs> mercy mercy is not my calling, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely not mercy, you said. Yeah. <laughs> so you are honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do, you, do you feel that bluntness, is that something that, that people need? That people need, for sure. Yeah, just to, they think just need to be loved. Yes. And so I think that as a church, that we, like, just the experience that we went through, and and, and I think I probably learned from you how to be blunt. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I think the bluntness is, uh, is something that we need because sometimes we're so busy being tolerant mm-hmm. or nice that we, we don't even heal no more. And one thing God is showing us this year is to really push into that place never before is healing, but we can't be, we can't be told, we can't be in the niceness of it all the time. We have to deal with those things, mm-hmm. but at the same time in confidentiality as we oh, do. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So this is good. Um, any, any questions out there for, um, what's her name? Kim. <laughs> Really so good. much love, so much love. <laughs> really good friend of mine, Kim. <laughs> um, I don't even know her name, but any more questions? Any questions for her? Um, one thing I I love about this is that um, I have stretched myself with you guys. Just so you know, I know you've said that, and uh, it's just because it's not in my character to put. <laughs> I call you a loose cannon, but you're not a loose cannon. But I, it's just a good way of putting it as in visual a loose cannon where somebody that. You totally are not loose, you, but, but when you make a dis- distraction, you make it. Like when you, when you make a noise, you make it, right? Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm putting you on a spot for a moment. That's okay. Um, but I think that's huge um, that, that we can do that is because where you stretch me to the point, say, and one thing God told me right in the beginning of the year is saying this is that, that we're, we're going to go past motives and past agendas, and we're just going to fight in that. I don't think we have it, but we all have motives and we all have agenda. So what was your motive when you came? My motive? Was your motive to go up on stage when you came? Oh, no. That wasn't even your thought, was it? Uh-uh. I wasn't going to stay there. <laughs> I was just going to go get healed. <laughs> I was going to move on. Yeah. No, I had no intention of even staying, really. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. So what was your motive? Or did you have an agenda? I didn't really have an agenda. No? Uh-uh. So you just came for yourself. I came for ministry. So you didn't really come to be part of the family. No. At that time. Uh uh-uh. uh So when did that switch over? Wow. Um. I don't know. I think it's probably when we started doing our classes. 
you know when you had those um is it not the, the DNA, DNA yeah. the DNA classes okay. and that was kind of more of a smaller setting and you just got to get to know each other a little bit better mm -hmm. otherwise during church time you kind of sometimes people leave too quick mm -hmm. so the classes I think were start a start of it of finally getting to recognize people and know who they were and and that made a difference and yeah. I think then it was more settling you know like oh, I think I could make something out of this yeah. you know so since then you're actually part of the prayer team now mm -hmm. and you're involved in um, almost like you're involved quite a bit and so i think that that's a cool example of what we do and the prayer team it gets to where things are happening with the prayer team mm -hmm. and so god's gonna move in that so was there any question there was colleen you might as well just ask that out loud <laughs> kim would you go through the whole process again knowing how difficult it was and how long it took wow yeah that's a good question if you thought that it would take a year, yeah. would you still claim? Yes. So why would you say yes? Because of how I feel now, I can't imagine carrying the baggage that I carried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, wow. I've never felt so free. Like, I had no idea how much my shoulders were weighed down with all the baggage. And once that layer by layer comes off, it, it opens up an area in your heart that is so free that... You feel like you can fly. Literally, you feel like you can fly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would have to say yes. So would, I would. Okay. So would you say that every every new level would have a new devil? Like, oh, yeah. Because you went oh, through one yeah. where you were flying, then somehow we go down again, right? Yep. Because <laughs> you, the other day you were bugging me and saying that we're, you came to be healed and you're still not healed. But really, you are healed of many things, except there's mm -hmm. new things that come up right. as you move forward. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's one thing we have to understand about healing and any ministry, any church. I'm telling you guys out there, it is so important for you to understand the healing process because when you get healed of something, God's going to use you for something new and the devil's going to attack you anew. Oh, yeah. And if you're not going to be ready for that, that you need healing more than once, then you're going to be stuck in a zone of never wanting to be part of a church or never part of a community because you think it's not working. So the fact is this, you need to get excited that when one process is done, God takes you to the next process yep. and to the next one, to the next one. First of all, we have enough DNA to last a lifetime and more. And so we have lots to learn about ourselves. So every time we go forward, every time we take another step, we find something that we have to work with to run that step that we took up. Right. Wouldn't you not agree? But also within that process, though, you also gain faith and trust mm -hmm. that the process sometimes is not as hard because all of a sudden you're realizing, okay, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. So now I got to turn that over and, and, and then have God take control, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're also learning in your own uh, faith process too. So do you think this, I think we're just going to talk about this all day today. What time is it? Um, oh, perfect. We'll, 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 oh, we add some scripture in it, but we'll, I'm going to include you in my, in my whole session here today. Okay. Where were I? What were you just saying? our faith and trust grows yeah. through the process so uh, what I would say this like a lot of people think they can do it alone do you think you could have done it alone oh there's no way I don't know how people can go without God I I literally walked away from God for five years I turned my back on him and I said I am not doing anything because there's things in my life that had turned sour mm -hmm. and I said no more and I was I can totally remember when it was I was on a four-wheeler my brother had just died and it was about, I don't know how many months later, and I was on a four-wheeler, and I just visited him out at the cemetery, and I said, I'm done. I'm done with you. I can't handle this. You have done nothing for me, and I'm done. I walked away for five years, and within that, I could still walk the walk and talk the talk. I could still talk Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, I could still do what I needed to do. Christian knees. <laughs> And I did that for five years, and that was the longest five years of my life and the hardest five years. And finally, at the end of that, I literally laid on the floor in my bedroom, and I said, I have nothing left to give you, but I surrender all because I can't go on. So I don't know, honestly, how people do it without God. Okay. I really don't. So let's go one step further. What about people? Could you do it by yourself or do you feel the people of the church is important? Oh, no, you need people. Okay. So tell me a little bit about it because like, were you were you more so a lone ranger for those five years? Was like, what do you mean lone ranger? Like I was on, I did, yes. Yeah. So like you yeah. were doing things on your own, trying to yes. live your life by yourself? During, yes. Okay. So, as you're a Christian, even when you became, when you had that moment, what what prompted you to go further into um, a community where the, you can be supported? Because that is the only way you can 
I mean, you, you, you know God is with you. You know God is in you. Christ is in you. But the only way you can get the actual fellowship is by people. Like, like the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Basically, like if you need a hug, you've got the hands and feet of Jesus. Somebody is hugging you and that's because of Christ in them. Uh -huh. You know, so you, you have to have that. You, mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's like you're, you could be dry bone even on that. I mean, even if you have God, you still have to have people. So you, you think it's worth the people. drive to, from the States? It's, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to just share the scripture with you, with, with the group here, and maybe, maybe you can help me talk it out. Maybe you'll be, maybe you'll, you'll start preaching it for me. Let's see how it goes here. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Ephesians chapter 4. Um, uh, I'm going to just look to the camera for a minute while I read this, but Ephesians chapter 4. Um, to 16 but just before this is talk about the fivefold ministries and before that and actually i'm going to, somebody requested that we talk about i think i'm going to talk about next week and this will lead into so i'm kind of going backwards but i think we'll lead into it a little bit because the fivefold ministries were gifted uh with with to certain people to lead and to to bring forth but it was it becomes it was a really interesting um insight that i saw as i was reading it this week is that actually like it's not just the fivefold but Actually, all our gifts, we become a gift to somebody. Mm. Like, I thought, wow, like this, what I have is not even about me. It's a gift to you. And that's what Fivefold Ministry, it's a gift. It's, it's, it's something that's not overruling. Right. It's, it's a gift. So that's why you can see me as a brother and a pastor. Mm -hmm. because, it's a, because it's a gift, right? And so when you look at that, if we can start looking at people like that. And so I'm going to talk about that next week because I think I'm going to have a little bit new revelation. But I'm going to go into and I'm going to try to go through everyone very small portionally, but to go that. But be, right after that, right after it said this, it says this. Right after he talked about putting the five folds in there, that's when you need, to, as as Jesus is in the right hand, when he's getting us ready for us to run this race together, right. he put those five full ministry in there. But this is what it says here. But we, in verse 14 of Ephesians 4, but we henceforth be no more children tossed here and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but by the slight of men, the slight by men and cunning craftiness, whereby we lie and wait to be deceived. And I think what really comes with this is just like we were talking about the idea of church and whatever connection of we've been here for a year is that I believe it gives us the less ability to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. like, like we don't get tossed right. as much. Right. Like what a power that is when we follow God's order that we don't mm. have to get tossed back and forth. And I have a lot of people, example, they toss back and forth. Even with their belief system, they toss back and forth. Even with their with their conscience, with everything, they toss back and forth. Or with their reasoning, mm. they toss back and forth. And and it's not just about the fivefold ministry. I'm going deeper than that. But that's it just comes right after that. It's that we need to put, a, which is called church, a structure in place where we can have that strength where we don't get tossed back and forth and where we have that place of worship and so forth. And then verse 15, it says, but speaking the truth in love, but when you say, but all the other stuff don't work until you do this. Mm. Like you, you can't move forward until you do this, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So he's saying that we need to go ahead of this. We need to come into the place of, Speaking love, I can't say so. Speaking truth in love, that's what's going to set us free. That's when we come together, and that, the very next verse says this: "From the whom the whole body is fitly joined together, compacted mm -hmm. by that which they every joint is supplied." We can't even be supplied. We can't even with this experience that you have had, and many others have. You're just one of the few that have this testimony that with this joint we you supply for me and i supply for you mm -hmm. the church supplies for each other mm -hmm. like literally you guys supply and when when i look at my worship team when i look at the prayer team they supply and so when we look at this scripture and it says that if we can do this in the right order this is what's going to happen you're going to be able to speak in love and love will release this it will release the very agent of your oxygen to flow and allow the blood to be pure mm -hmm. and so when you look at that then it looks you look at the heart of God releasing in the people because we're compacted. Wow. And so when you look at this, because the body of Christ is a function. There's a head, and then there's the body. But I often ask God what the heart is. Now I'm going to bug some people really here. I understand that. And you'll probably, <laughs> but I often wonder what the heart was. 
when you look at, I believe the fivefold ministry is the heart, where 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 God allows leadership to come or or people to protect, people to cover, and allows. And just when you look at the incident of, and I'm just gonna kind of pave the way for next week here. You look at the incident of when you when there's no leader, there is no family. Oh right. And so I believe there has to be a hard situation. And I believe that when you have this gift to lead or this gift gifts to lead, and now you guys are leading too, like it's just going to grow from there, right? Mm-hmm. And so when you look at that, fitly, fitly joined together, compacted, means it's so tight that it cannot mm-hmm. be broken. And that's what you were talking about family. You said once you got there, once you got to that place, when we got to that family place where, where we're not always offended over everything, even though we right. do wrong, even though right. I say things wrong, but we fix it and we move on. And it, it's, that's a that's the power of compact, right? Mm-hmm. Is that you said... Like we, I can argue all I want about my dad, but I'll still be there for him because he's my dad, right? It's the same idea here in the church is that we can find wrong, but right. we can fix the wrong. And we can, because of that, that connection, you do almost anything for your family. Well, it's because I think we're all open to that. Mm-hmm. And that makes a difference too. Yeah, it does. It's actually we're on the same page. Right. Saying, let's do this. Let's Like this revival that we, we, we're going through, even though we're small, it's still a revival. And people think it has to be big, but it doesn't. But the it's because we're together. Mm-hmm. It's there's something gonna release because we're doing it together yeah. and big time in that sense of it. Yeah. Hi, Wendy. It's good to see you on. Yeah. Wendy uh, says hugs to you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> hugs back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all she says. You give the best hugs to. <laughs> I think that's what she says. Thank I'm, you. I'm not reading it properly, but anyway, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> fitly joined together and compacted that every joint supplied according to the effectual working of the measure of every part and I think I love the idea that we have this connection as a family and that's why I want to talk about when, uh, next week about fivefold ministry and so forth but the whole idea of connection is because now because we're connected we supply and um, it's actually your measure I need to do my measure I Mary's measure I need to do my measure I need that part of the body to do my measure without the measure of everything you can't do your measure because what what are you doing if there's nothing connected to you mm-hmm. like what are you really what are you really doing if you have nothing connected to you you have to really think about that and when we talk about uh, your testimony of family and I thought well this fits in good because I think it's really about that it's about you came there I okay what can I do for you but it didn't t- take long till till you got connected to the point where you say okay I'm gonna get back would you agree Actually, you yeah. probably had a desire to do it. Oh, uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was underlying in there. I don't know. <laughs> no, but it, when when I asked when when we we invited you to worship, there was a desire for it already. Yeah, I did have the desire for that right away. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a desire to give back, mm-hmm. and when you get healed, you want to give. Yes, you do. Right. Yep. And so that's about the that's exactly what he's talking about here. When when that starts flowing, is one one starts flowing, the next starts flowing. The one that flows, the next flows, and also we become powerful, and then we can truly have testimonies. You know, we can truly see the testimonies of that. So that's good to see. And so it says that every part measure um, increase the body. There again, the word increase. You know, mm-hmm. we, we need to increase. So to make increase to, of the body unto to edify itself in love. And so the biggest thing I think we're going through now is in this sense of um, of church and and healing mm-hmm. and deliverance is how do we connect after healing. Like what? What? What do you think brought you to the place to say, "Okay, I need this family"? What brought me to that place? What brought you to the place saying, "Yes, I belong here"? Hmm. Um. I think the idea of connecting and worship was probably a way of. Of bringing it to the family, but I I don't know. The family was so um, welcoming. I guess maybe it was just so easy to fit in. Okay. Um, that's probably part of it. I mean. So, so what? What kind of in daily life church? What kind of parts did you feel feel fit in easily with? Where the tough questions come. <laughs> Well, I always fit in easily with worship. I mean, okay. that's just an uh, just a natural for me. Um, anybody that's a jokester or has fun, of course, I always fit in with. So <laughs> that's easy. Yeah. Um, 
don't know. I, I would say... So it wasn't I, because of religious reasons? Of fitting in? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> all about the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I know I know one church that just launched, and they, they have that in their uh, code. We, we party hard. <laughs> 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 I need to check that one out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. So, I don't know what time we have. 34. Any questions out there? Any comments out there for Kim or myself? I have this scripture here. I had a message done, but she's been doing such good talking, so I just kept going with her. Um, so, we're just, just the way it's going to be today. But it's good. It's good to have... Uh, Sometimes it's good to, for people to hear how we feel within the church, and a lot of times we don't talk about it. And I want to do that with more people, and, and we're going to be doing that in two weeks now in, in Winnipeg. And so, but to be able to do that where we can just talk about it. So, comment, question. I have to wait a little bit because mm -hmm. it's kind of delays. <laughs> but um, any kind of comments or questions on this? And like, and maybe you have some. Maybe you have some. And that you feel that God is showing you. I think one of the things also with church is, or with the family, is that we all have a desire to grow, like spiritually, and I mean, that's our goal. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all at a place or a stage in our life now where we want more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another thing that draws us all together is because we're so hungry for God. We're so hungry for change. We're so hungry for so much more of Him. That, yeah. And that's why we come together so well and connect so well is because yeah. we're all striving for that goal. Do you think that we're seeing it? Oh yeah. Tell me how, sure. you, how you feel that growth happens. Growth happens just by connecting with people to me. Yeah. And then as you connect with people, you get to hear, like I love hearing someone else's story. I love knowing what they've been through and where they've come. And it actually um, lifts you up. Like it, it just brings you to another level of who God is. So it just, there's just something about sharing. I mm. think that's the biggest thing is about sharing, yeah. getting real with one another, yeah. you know, not putting on the plastic face and yeah, you come to church, everything's fine, but being real, yeah. like, you know what? I sin, I do this and that, but you know what? I have a God that forgives me. So the preacher you doesn't know, have much to do with it. No, they just there. They're just there for looks. <laughs> that's just it. At least you got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a church do you feel that do you see people individually growing oh yeah a lot i mean i just look at jacob and see how much he's growing it's just hey, awesome jacob. to watch him yeah i love seeing just the change and on their attitude and how they yeah it's beautiful it's yeah. beautiful as a pastor you must just enjoy it yeah i mean seeing how everybody has a desire to mm. grow yeah so is there a danger in this um, with us that we have so much fun being small that we want to stay small? Um, <laughs> I have to say no because I love small family, but I came from a small church, so mm -hmm. I understand it. And maybe our ministry is not in the church. Maybe our ministry is outside of the church. Mm -hmm. So you don't know. I mean, you got to leave that open. Yeah, but do you, not... do you feel that in the state that we are in that we would be welcoming to people? I don't think Just like would. you felt welcomed, would you think more people would feel welcome? Yes. Would you be one of them that would welcome them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some good points. I do not like seeing someone sit by themselves and nobody goes over there and says hi. And mm -hmm. you know, it's, I've been in too many churches like that. I like a church to be able to have someone come and visit and mm -hmm. you know be yeah. part of their life. Yeah. So tell me what give give the people out there a view of what it would look like coming into our church today. Like what what. what what do, can they expect to experience? Well, when they first come in, you always have these crazy ushers, not ushers, but welcoming greeters. people and <laughs> greeters, and you're like, whatever, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, um, it's coming in, it's just, uh, first of all, you got the music playing, which is always a good thing. That kind of makes a really good interaction as far as having some nice worship music playing. Um, and a greeter right away at the door. And I, they're always good greeters. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you never have a problem with at least feeling welcome there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anybody that doesn't come and, you know, um, greet them or, and you know, from the from the crew that are that's in there. I don't think they ever have a problem going and making sure that they feel welcome and coming in. So, I mean, it's always an open, it always feels very open. 
like I don't feel do, do, like do when you, you walk people... in you feel bad like you're that people are stuck up or anything or they're in their own little group or I think it always feels pretty open. Do you think some people would consider our services scary? Yeah. 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 Don't talk ease people a little bit with that. Um it would all it's the idea of allowing yourself the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And people are sometimes scared of allowing themselves that freedom because they don't they feel that they're going to lose control. Mm. So Good word. I think if they would allow themselves just that freedom they would realize that it's all for the good. Like God is not going to scare you. He's not there to harm you. He's there to make you feel free. So why do you think people, like this is a good discussion because I think that what you spoke there, I think I, that's a way I like the way it was said, you know, the freedom to actually, like that's, I, yeah, I wouldn't even be able to say it that good. Um, but what do you think would, let's say people didn't release that, what, what, how could we ease people of what they see? That it's not evil. Yeah. You know, because sometimes people automatically think if you're doing something different that it's evil. Okay. And it's not. Um, you have to allow yourself, um, in, in any of you, you're kind of scared of it, just sit in it. Just sit in it for a while and just and just relax in it. Instead of being all so tense, mm. just allow yourself to sit in it and just and just feel it, you know, if you have to. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's like if you don't allow yourself to, you're, you're going to become critical of it. Exactly. Right off the bat you will because you'll be scared of it automatically. But if you just sit, you'll realize that there's a softness and a, a spiritual uh, presence about it that will actually calm you. Mm-hmm. But they just have to allow that. They have yeah. to be open to that. So. so do you feel that the messages and, the, first of all, the worship, I mean, because they're spontaneous, um, do you feel that people could enter into that? In the worship, I think um, that's actually even a little bit sometimes scary in some areas just because we are a little bit more open. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of hard not to be drawn into it because it's, a, it's such a f- good flow, mm-hmm. you know, that if they would allow themselves to sit in that also, they would realize that, you know, they themselves would also be in the presence really quickly. Yeah. So just the idea of letting them, they, some people just need to let go mm-hmm. and they just need to relax in it. Yeah. And so... Like, I think a lot of people come in there and they, they want to see it. And I, what I like to do is, so people have a, an expectation of what it looks like. Because sometimes if you're not told what it's going to look like, then they might run out before they even give it a chance. Um, but even the prophetic ministries that we have and stuff like that, that could scare people tremendously. Um, did that ever scare you? But it could also be very exciting. Yeah. So, I mean... Who wouldn't want to be prophesied over? Yeah. I mean, really, that would think that would be a really good thing. I was never scared of that. No. 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 I think the biggest thing people might be scared is that their secrets be revealed or their mail be read. Yeah, but then again, that may mean control. That would be allowing to lose control. Yeah. People don't like to lose control. No, they don't. But at the same time, to encourage people that we're not there to... You're not bring, there to take their... We're not there to no. bring their negativity publicly. You're there to encourage and uplift and love and yeah. and that's how you do it. And while I'm doing that, I make mistakes. I say things wrong. Who doesn't? <laughs> I, uh, I think that we all get zeal full of that. I think the biggest thing I have uh, when I listen to the testimony, and I love hearing testimonies, but the biggest thing I have to work with is saying that, okay, well, did I do that right? Did I do that right? I think we all look at that. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we have to learn that the pastors are people the leaders are people the mm-hmm. prayer team is going to, like we're going to, sooner or later you're going to see a lot of prayer team and function in our church and we do already but i mean we're just going to see more of that they're just people they could say things wrong they could do things wrong they're just people but allow the gift to operate yeah i, I receive the gift that people have yeah uh, which is family but it's also the prophetic and it's also all those things I think the people also need to realize that the prayer team is still getting help too. Yeah. Know? That we're not higher up just because we're the prayer team. No. You know, we're still going through healing ourselves. Yeah. You don't, you don't want what? A year later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the biggest thing is that you have to understand the prayer team is put in places because it's, they chose and committed to come under authority. Right. That's why they're put in place. And then they are committed to train with me so that we can flow together so we can be a blessing together not individually and so when you look at that it's not about being perfect it's about coming under a call under a vision and saying we're working with this vision in this place and that's that's why we're successful i believe and i think that's where the success is coming from that and so when you see people saying oh they should be on prayer team yeah they should because they said yes to the vision they said yes to what's happening there they said they said let's do it together 
if that's the case, then I shouldn't be able to sage either because I'm not perfect either. Right. And so, when, but we look at this place and say, these gifts need to be revealed and they need to be open, and we need to. And I, I feel so good about what's happening now because uh, our culture is really rising up in the gifts again, and mm-hmm. it's really rising up the way it needs to be. Yeah. There we go. Yes. I have some comments here. It's awesome. Um, Marilyn says, "Love your joy." Love you, hap- love your happiness. Keep it up, Cam. <laughs> Thanks, Marilyn. Yeah, and Wendy says, "You guys are awesome and welcoming." So that's good. Yeah, there's more people seeing it. Um, that's awesome. Community prayer is incredible. That's Dennis, and there's probably a lot more comments that I missed. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. So that's good. That's good. Anything that you want to add that's in your heart that you had written down. That. You- um, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't know if anything. So what's in, what's your next step? <laughs> no, besides that, other, I just, like. Like my next step in what? In, in, in church, like what do you feel, what do you feel your step is now that you're doing? Or, 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 or is it just. Is there more things I could be involved in? <laughs> no. Uh, I thought this was it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what more do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're caught in there. No, and I know. No. The thing is, the thing is, it's so funny because whenever you ask for anything, Clean and I just kind of both look at each other and say, "Oh, here we go again." So you pretty much have us, no matter what. So no, I don't mean doing it again, but for yourself, what do you feel your next steps are within daily life church? Like, are you feeling like you're still going through a process? I think everybody goes through process their whole life. I don't think you're ever done with a process. But the process is what gets you to who you are. Today. Okay. You know, that's the thing. There you get to learn more about yourself. And before, as you learn more about yourself, you learn about the importance of what you are to God. Because you said the gifts. We're talking about the gifts. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, you learn your gifts. And with those gifts, you learn to use them of the people around you. Mm-hmm. And that's huge. I mean, once you get that opportunity to use them, you realize... God's got you here for a purpose. Yeah. You know, he's going to use you. Yeah. And that just makes you feel really so, good. So do you think with with the process and getting to know your identity and purpose mm-hmm. and giftings. Identity, that's a good word, yeah. And, and, and um, giftings and so forth, that that these processes are actually somewhat even a little bit fun sometimes? Yes. They are. <laughs> yeah. Because now, now we know that there's a result after there this. There is. And we know there is a victory after every there process. Is. So we have something to look forward to now. And the victory is worth it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, working hard and getting a really good payout, right? Yeah. Well, you work hard at your job mm-hmm. to get a raise. So why wouldn't you work hard in your spiritual life to get a raise? There you go. To get a raise in Christ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? That's right. Everything has to be, you have to fight for whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to fight for it, then work for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to close her down here, but um, I kind of went different than I thought, but that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, so we so good that we have out here. I'm going to go eat some of those snacks that are on the table out there. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so we're going to go for it. But if you guys keep commenting, um, even if we're off, if you have any questions, we're here for you guys, and we want to see it move forward. Um, we invite you, if you haven't been part of our church for a while, we invite you to come join us. Go on live. Hey, Tony, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us, Pastor Tony, New City Church. Amazing man of God. Amazing people. They're amazing family like we talked about mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So we bless you guys, and we totally invite you to come to Daily Life Church. We don't have Sunday morning service now, but we have Saturday night service, and we do Facebook Live every Tuesday right now. And we do it differently. Today we decided to do a testimony kind of a style, and it worked out that we actually had more discussion than anything. Like... <laughs> That's what happens when we, I talk too much. Yeah, we don't pre-plan everything, but we had a good discussion um, because that's really what's about. Is we're we're trying to what we're trying to do is bring our kind of discussion into live. What mm-hmm. just talking it out in front of a camera so you can see how we're talking to each other mm-hmm. and encouraging each other and so forth and that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so but that's what we're doing. So everybody say goodbye to Kim. Bye. Bye, Bye Kim. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bless you guys. See you later.